What I'll do today is give a very brief introduction to Regulus and our, our exciting Anticori Copper Gold project. The Anticori Copper Gold project, as Eric mentioned, has potential to be a major copper gold mine in the not too distant future. It's effectively a portion of a larger deposit that's in a brownfield setting, uh, which provides a, a clear timeline for this to make a transition into being a major mine. Now, having said that, um, it is in a complex district, and as I'll touch on, it, it does bring a, opportunities for, for timeline to development, but also a few challenges and a little bit of an on and off nature on the project. So we have been quiet for the last two years between COVID and some social uh, matters to get resolved carefully to make sure we ensure the future of the district. Uh, those are resolved. We're back to drilling right now, and we'll have news flow coming, coming soon. Uh, we are publicly listed, so the appropriate disclaimers uh, apply to, to what I'll be talking about today. We are listed on the TSXV as well as the over-the-counter for those of you that invest from the U.S., and we're also listed in the, the LEMA exchange. I put this diagram up to start because if, if I think the vast majority of you that are, are watching today are involved in the, in the resource sector and should know this diagram. If you don't, you absolutely should pay attention to this diagram. This is a supply, projected supply demand curve for copper for the next uh, next decade beyond where we're at right now. And as we can see, uh, there's a projection for an extreme shortage of copper. I've worked in the copper space for a long time and we've always had curves very similar to this showing that we're not going to be able to keep up with production. But there's been a very fundamental shift with the increased electrification of many aspects of society right now. And I don't think you can capture it better than the Wood McKenzie quote we have on here right now that uh, there will be 19 million tons of additional copper required if we really hold to the net zero uh, 2050 guidelines or objectives that are being stated right now. That means as an industry, we have to find and to put into production a new Escondida mine every year for the next 20 years. And quite simply, as an industry, this is not an easy challenge to do. You don't see those type deposits come along very often, and we're, we're not delivering at that rate by any means at now, and I doubt that there will be much of a chance that we'll be able to keep up to this. That means the high copper prices we're already beginning to experience are likely to be maintained and probably increase beyond this. So uh, it's a great time to be delivering a fantastic project like we have in, in Anticori. Just a little bit about our team. Our team, we're a group of seasoned explorationists. Um, Kevin Heather, our chief geologic officer, Mark Wayne, our, our CFO, have all had experience with major mining companies prior to forming juniors. And Regulus is, is one of three companies that we've been in, involved with. And all three companies, we've had the same strategy. Our strategy is to identify projects that have the potential to be very large copper or copper gold deposits to acquire those projects, to add value by expanding or defining the resource and de-risking the project, proving that it could be put into production. And then ideally, an early monetization by selling that to a major mining company. Our first company was called Antares Minerals. We successfully executed this strategy by acquiring the Hakira deposit, drilling it out and selling it to First Quantum for $650 million, about a tenfold increase for our shareholders. With Regulus, we have our hands on a great project that we'll talk about today called Anticori. And we have a third company called Aldebron that's focusing, focusing on a very exciting copper gold opportunity in Argentina called the Altar Project as well. So where is the Anticori Project located? We're in the Northern part of Peru. Peru, as everyone knows, is a major mining company in the world, one of the top copper gold producers in the world. We're in a stretch of the Andes that's incredibly well endowed geologically, uh, quite a large number of major copper gold or copper gold projects in surrounding the area we're at, both as operating mines and projects open for development. And that means that we have excellent infrastructure in the area. Having said this, it's not without its challenges. Peru is going through some turbulence politically right now, and that does cause a little bit of off and on nature to some projects, particularly earlier stage projects. But fundamentally, it's a mining country, and it's well recognized that the mining industry is, is, is critical to driving the country out of some of the economic challenges they're facing due to the global pandemic right now. So let's drop right into where the project's at. Uh, this is the, the Wagoyok district. Our land position is indicated in the various shades of pink and red in the upper portion of the diagram. And our, we've put together a land position located just to the north of the operating Tantuatai mine. The Tantuatai mine is a heap leach gold operation 
The owners of that are Southern Copper, Buenaventura, and a local Peruvian company called Espro. They are mining the oxides on the top. They produce about 100 to 150,000 ounces of gold a year, but that oxide mine will be exhausted in the next five to seven years. And essentially they're pre-stripping a very large copper gold sulfide at depth beneath their portion of the project, which extends onto our, our project. So our play here is to drill out the portion of the large copper gold sulfide deposit on our ground, demonstrate that we have a very significant portion of this and a critical portion of it to make a transition into a much larger copper gold sulfide project. It's interesting to note that seven kilometers to the southeast is the Cerro Corona mine operated by Goldfields, one of their top producing mines, but also a mine that has a relatively short mine life. In about 2025, they terminate mining from the pit and they will continue to mill low grade stockpile for about five years. But by 2030, this district needs to make a transition from two medium sized, very profitable mines to one much larger copper gold mine. And we believe we have a key portion of that project. Also important to note that uh, about 35 kilometers of the south is the Anacocha mine, the largest gold mine in South America. They will also be going through a transition from oxides to underlying copper gold sulfides in the next few years. We, uh, we have put this project together over the last few years. We have been drilling on the project and we do have an interim resource on our ground. It's quite substantial already. It's over 500 million tons at quite elevated copper gold grades. To put that into context, it's about 5 billion pounds of copper contained, 4.5 million ounces of gold, and over 100 million ounces of silver. This is a view looking at the Tantuatai mine and our land position and a conceptual pit that constrains the resource that I just indicated. And we can see that within this conceptual pit, the, the blocks that are in color are the resource that falls onto our ground. We see the data through data sharing agreements with the neighbors, but we're not allowed to present that. But you can see that approximately half of the, of the pit in this diagram falls on our ground. And that's where the 500 million tons of quite attractive grade that we've talked about are presented. Um, there's a very large resource uh, reported for copper gold sulfides on the neighbor's ground as well. So the combined resource of this project is already putting it into the level of one of the larger opportunities for, a, for development of a copper gold project. And it's effectively being pre-stripped by the neighbors next door and in a very good position to make a transition into a new mine in the not too distant future. That will require a consolidation of the district. We're only partway through demonstrating what the mineralization is on our ground. We've changed the view on this diagram and we're looking back to the Southeast. So we're looking in the opposite direction. We can see the pit that constrains our resource. Uh, once again, it's important to note that 500 million tons plus is only mineralization on our ground within that pit. That does not include what the neighbors report. But we can see a number of drill holes we've completed over the last few years off to the northern side in an area we call the Antinorte extension of the Antiquari project. And we've had some pretty spectacular results. These drill holes are outside of the pit, outside of the currently reported resource. Um, you can see the, the, the better results on the left side of the diagram here, holes like uh, AK-26 with over 473 meters at 1.4% copper equivalent. So these are very substantial in, in intersections of mineralization. And with some additional drilling, we'll be able to update this resource and provide it. However, to continue drilling to the north, it was necessary that we obtain permits to be able to do that. Until uh, 2020, we were only able to drill, get a cursor, up to a line that I'm indicating with a highlighter right now from holes 35, 41, down through 26 and 39. That's as far north as we could drill. We required a new permit to be able to drill into the Antinorte section of the project. We received that in February of 2020. And in March, we had to shut down for COVID. Um, by late 2020, we were able to initiate drilling safely given COVID protocols. We completed holes 44 and 45, demonstrating that the system extends to the north. Um, this is magnetic geophysical data that's underlying this diagram. And what really draws our attention to the north is this magmatic high complex. It's a, it's a geophysical signature indicative of an intrusive center, the one that we believe is driving much of the copper gold sulfide mineralization developed 
particularly in the scarns at depth on our ground and to the south. Um, much of this is untested. These first two holes that we put in late in 2020 encountered mineralization, not as high of grade as what we'd like, but it did demonstrate the system moved to the north. And we now will be, proceed to begin drilling the rest of the anomaly. We initiated drilling again in December um, a month ago. Hole AK-46 is highlighted on this diagram. And AK-46 is a hole that's drilled to intersect AK-26 at a high angle. So the mineralization that we see in AK-26 was quite spectacular. And we encountered a, a new style of mineralization, much a style of mineralization more indicative of the center of the system where we think the, the, the heart of the system is coming from. It's a breccia hosted style of mineralization. The intercept was 473 meters at 1.39% 1 1 copper equivalent. Uh, it's notably cleaner mineralization, less deleterious elements than we see in some of the mineralization to the south. However, we have very little control on the, the volume of this mineralization. It's a nice long run, but it's in breccia. Breccia bodies can be pipe-like. We don't know if we're drilling right down a breccia body. Uh, it's kind of hard to imagine this doesn't have significant volume with that intercept length. So this first hole 26 is designed to intersect this at a high angle and demonstrate that it has volume to it. It has a third dimension to it as we drill forward. That hole's quite deep right now. Um, we still have some time to go to terminate that hole. And as Eric mentioned, that the drill assays are a little bit slow to be delivered right now. So it will probably be the end of February or even March before we see those first results coming out. A second rig has arrived on the property and we, we plan to have that second rig, rig up and drilling by next week sometime. And uh, we, we will drill with two rigs through the rainy season through April. And at the end of the rainy season, we anticipate we'll add a third and fourth rig to the project to continue to drill. It's important to note, that, and even more so when we're, we're involved in a project that clearly has the earmarks of potential to become a major mine, that it's not simply about drilling out grades and tons. Um, we, we already have a substantial amount of mineralization. There's clearly enough mineralization to justify a, the development of a major mine on this project. We will continue to increase the amount of mineralization on our ground to improve our hand in the poker match, if you will, on this. But it's probably equally important that we are working on ESG matters um, to make sure that the communities in the area are comfortable with how we're working, that we demonstrate that this is an opportunity for them in the long run. We intentionally specialize in looking for projects that are very large projects that have a long mine life, what we refer to, refer to as a multi-generational opportunity, the type of project that will produce jobs for decades to come, not simply a short boom and bust scenario that sometimes is a challenge for our industry. And over the past year, we've spent a lot of emphasis on working with the local communities to demonstrate the benefits that can come from this opportunity in terms of employment, in terms of improving agricultural practices, improving access to clean drinking water, educational opportunities. Um, that's bearing fruit, but it's not without its challenges. Uh, Peru is currently in a situation where um, we've undergone a, a rather major change at the presidential level over the past year. And this year we face local elections for mayors and governors. And it's commonly a time when a lot of People present uh, their cases by protest, social protest and, and holding things up. We will most likely experience some of that at times on the project as many projects will improve, but we are very confident that the, the strong uh, base of stakeholders we've built in the area, the community members that very much want us to go forward in the project will, will back us and, and help us move forward. So we took our time before we initiated drilling Again, we feel that we're in a good position to be able to have sustainable drilling going forward on the project. And it's important to note that even though it takes a little longer, it's sometimes frustrating for us as shareholders, but that's what's necessary for us to move forward in a, in a sustainable manner on the project. As a consequence of this, when we've had a period of time when we haven't been as visible in the market, what it does is it produces an opportunity. There are many good gold projects out there, gold copper projects out there right now. But we currently have a market cap of about $85 million. To put that in perspective, that's less than a penny a pound in the ground, whereas many of these projects typically transact more in the range of four or five cents per pound in the ground. So there's an outstanding opportunity for re-rating. It's a great time to watch a project like ours to, to enter in for a price. 
Uh, very clean shareholder structure on this, significant uh, insider ownership, as well as a, as a, a long-term backer in Route 1 that owns about a quarter of the company moving forward. So it's a, it's a project that's positioned, well leveraged for a, a notable re-rating, a notable price increase as we bring this back into to visibility with the drilling program that we're having. Or we already have a major resource in hand. It's in a position with the, an excellent opportunity for the development of the project to go forward. Great strategic partners in Route 1, the group that owns a quarter of the company right now. Cisco Gold Royalties is also involved with us and has helped finance moving the project forward. So for those of you that are watching for great copper opportunities, this is an outstanding one to take a look at. And please contact us with any questions you might have. We have kind of a limited time to present things today. So please, uh, please uh, make contact with us or any, anything you would like to learn about the project. Thank you very much.